What's up friends, it's Valentin Kosenko. In today's video we'll be taking a look at optimized media, render cache or proxy as some of you might know it in DaVinci Resolve. And if you're working on a very old laptop or a PC that does not have the best hardware, then you'll definitely benefit from the steps in this tutorial because you'll be able to play back your H.264 or H.265 footage very smoothly after this. Yeah, it just generally speeds up your workflow and is something everyone should do. But before we start, let's roll that intro and then I'll show you how everything works in DaVinci Resolve. Okay, so I've prepared a very small project here which will show you how optimized media works. And I have some drone footage here which was shot on the Mavic Pro in H.264 and my PC is actually pretty good so it can play back that footage almost without any problems. But if I'm trying to run the exact same footage on my Dell XPS 9570, then it stutters and playback is not smooth at all. So why does that even happen? When it comes to H.264 or H.265, you're normally speaking of a IPB codec, which is using interframe compression, which saves a lot of disk space, but needs some calculations to be done on your PC, which is slowing playback down. So what we wanna do is convert this footage into an intermediary codec, which is a lot easier to play back on your PC. And depending on what kind of codec you choose, it can be a small file size or it can be quite huge. So if you want to, you can also use your optimized media for rendering, but I am personally not doing that. I am just using a very low quality proxy file so that I can preview my footage, make the cuts easier. And as soon as I'm done with everything, I can just go ahead and render everything out with the source media that I have. So in in the end I'm saving quite a lot of disk space because I'm using these very compressed files. I'm just using the optimized media to work on the project and as soon as I'm done I can delete all of it and continue with the next project. Okay but enough talking, let's take a look at DaVinci Resolve and what we gotta do here. First of all I'd suggest to choose a place for your media storage, which in my case is on another drive on my PC. Click on DaVinci Resolve, click on Preferences, then click on Media Storage. And as you can see, mine is on letter D and in folder DaVinci Resolve right here. And as soon as you've done that, you might have to restart DaVinci Resolve. When you come back, you can continue and click on the small icon right here. Then click on Master Settings if you haven't already. Scroll down a little and you'll find Optimized Media and Render Cache. And that's where you will have all your settings for your optimized media. So if you're following this tutorial on the Mac, then you'll not find DNX HR right here, but it will be ProRes instead. There's actually a small difference in file size and quality between DNX HR and Apple ProRes, but we'll talk about it in just a second. So as you can see, I am using DNX HRLB, which is a low bitrate optimized media format. If you take a look here, there are also some other options that you can choose from. And the reason why I am choosing DNX HRLB right here is to reduce file sizes of my optimized media. Now, if your intent is to use that optimized media and render cache for your rendering, then you're better off choosing something like DNX HR HQ or even HQX if you're working with 10-bit files. The other thing you have to look out for, and this really depends on what kind of resolution your footage has, is the optimized media resolution. And I am personally using half as my optimized media resolution because my source footage is in UHD. So if you set it up like this, what is going to happen is it will reduce your UHD resolution to full HD and it will also convert it to DNX HRLB. The other thing I would suggest doing is to put this from five to one seconds and also check automatically cache transitions in user mode as well as automatically cache composites in user mode. So what this is gonna do is it will render your transitions or your texts or fusion composites so that they play back smoothly as well. And by the way, all of this will be in DNX HRLB, which is the same as the optimized media format that we've chosen before. But before we continue, let's just quickly take a look at the different optimized media formats or intermediary formats. Okay, so both Apple and Avid have a website where you can find all of the information concerning their different codecs. So if we scroll down a little, you can see that HQ does only support 8 bits, while HQX supports up to 12 bits. So if you're using GH5 footage and you have shot it in 10 bit 422 and you want to use your optimized media to render everything out, then I would suggest going with HQX because it will preserve that 10 bit file. But if you only want to use proxies for your editing process, then as you can see, you can just choose DNX HRLB, which has a compression ratio of 22 by one and thus makes the file size really small. 
So if we take a look at UHD here, at DNxHRLB, we have a data rate of 17.87 megabytes per second compared to 86.82 with DNxHRHQX. So as you can see, file size is already a lot, lot smaller. And one other thing that you have to consider is the frame rate that you're shooting in. So if you're, for example, shooting in 50 frames, then of course your data rate in DNxHRLB will be twice as big as with 25 frames right here. And by the way, if you store your source media on a NAS, then you might have to check your ethernet connection because for some sources, you might need at least a dual one gigabit ethernet connection and some might even need 10 gigabit ethernet. Depending on the file size, you might want to look out for that as well. And by the way, when it comes to Apple ProRes, they have a very similar table that you can take a look at here. And the codec names also look pretty similar, although they're not the same. And one other thing you have to look out for is that this right here is not megabytes, but megabits. In this case, for ProRes 422LT, for 25 frames, we have 342 megabits per second, which is 42.75 megabytes per second. So as you can see, ProRes 422LT is still bigger than DNX HRLB. So you might want to go with something like ProRes 422 Proxy instead, if you want to save as much disk space as possible. Because as you can see, ProRes 422 Proxy has a file size of around 18.87 megabytes per second, which is pretty similar to what we have with DNX HRLB. LB right here. Okay, but I think that's enough technical talk. Let's take a look at DaVinci Resolve again and scroll down just a little because we still have to choose our working folders. And you might remember that we've chosen our media storage before. And the only thing you gotta do here is check if the folders are on the hard drive you have chosen before. Okay, and that's all the settings we have to change here. Click on save. And now that you've set up your optimized media resolution as well as format and so on, you first have to make that optimized media. And in my case, I've already done that. But if you want to optimize media, you can just mark your clips, right click, and then click on generate optimized media. And if you've created optimized media in the past, then you can just rediscover that optimized media. And by the way, if you want to check whether your source media has been optimized or not, you can click here. Then scroll to the right just a little and as you can see we have optimized media half resolution right here. Now the only other thing we have to do is click on playback and use optimized media if available. But before we do that, let me show you how much it stutters if I'm trying to preview the footage here. Well, with this PC, it's actually not that bad. But if you're working on a very low end PC, then you might have a different experience. But now if we click on playback, and use optimized media if available, then it just goes through it like butter, which is very pleasing to the eye if you're working on a 144 hertz monitor. And by the way, it is also the same for the timeline. If you take a look here, it plays almost everything back smoothly except for that animated text in the beginning. And this is due to the fact that we have not rendered that Fusion composite. So that's where our render cache comes into play. And just like with the optimized media, we also have to activate that in the settings first. So click on playback, then check render cache. And now you have two options that you can choose from. You can either choose smart or you can use user. If you use smart, it will try to render everything out that might cause stutter in playback. But if you use user, then depending on the settings we have chosen before, it will still render our transitions as well as fusion effects or composites. So as you can see now, this part right here is blue. There is a blue line above this clip. And this means that it has been rendered already. And if I move it just a little bit, then you can see that the line becomes red and immediately starts to render everything out again. And as soon as that line is blue, it plays back very smoothly. Now, if you've watched my last DaVinci Resolve tutorial where I show you my favorite shortcuts, you might have noticed that I put render cache color output on my F5 key. You can of course also just right click on a clip and then render cache color output here. So if you have very CPU or GPU intensive tasks that you're using on this clip, then you might want to activate that option so that it again renders everything out before you play it back. Especially when you're working with motion blur or noise reduction, then you might want to do that. Because if you don't, then it will keep stuttering and make editing a nightmare. And by the way, if you don't want to render it, you can just press F5, or at least if you've watched my last tutorial with the shortcuts, then you can use that shortcut. This is not a regular shortcut by DaVinci Resolve. So if you want some tips on DaVinci Resolve shortcuts that will speed up your editing speed at least two times then you should definitely go ahead and check that video out and as you can see if I just mark these clips right here press f5 
then the line will appear and it will render everything out immediately depending on your hardware this might take a little time though and yeah that's pretty much it to optimize media and render cache or proxies so there's one other thing that you can also do to improve performance which is called proxy mode in davinci resolve if you click on playback and then look for proxy mode here you can either choose half resolution or quarter resolution and if you do that take a look what happens now our preview is actually only displayed in a quarter frame so the amount of pixels we have compared to before is only 25 percent now and of course you can just zoom in like that and continue your work just like before all the settings like zoom position and so on will work like before so you don't have to worry about that and when you're done you can just click on playback proxy mode off and you're back to your normal resolution. If you're still struggling with playback, then you can also modify your timeline resolution and go with something like Full HD. As I've said before, if optimized media resolution half is not doing the job for you, then you can even go with quarter or an even smaller resolution. I personally made some good experience with half when it comes to UHD source media. By the way, if you wanna see what kind of hardware I'm using for my video editing, then you might want to check out this video right here. And if you wanna see how to build everything together, there's also a video for that. And now to close everything up, let's take a look at the deliver page, because depending on what kind of settings you've chosen before, you might want to look out for that setting right here. If you go on video, scroll down, go to advanced settings, you have two options. You can use optimized media and you can also use render cached images. Now, if you have chosen a very low bitrate proxy or optimized media or render cache format, then you definitely don't want to check these two options here because what's gonna happen is it will use your very low bitrate files and render them out like that. And if you don't check these two boxes, it will just use your source media. You can still work with your proxy files right here, no problem, but the quality will just be the best. However, if you're using DNxHR HQX or another very high bitrate codec, then you might also want to use optimized media and render cached images. Depending on your workflow this might save you a lot of time and if you have the storage space then this is definitely something you should do because it works a little bit like Final Cut where it renders your timeline while you're working on it. So you're saving time when it comes to delivering the project in the end. But since in my case I'm just using the proxies for a preview I will uncheck that and one other thing that I would like to warn you about as well is that when you're working with color I would suggest to not use optimized media especially if you're working with 10-bit files because then colors might look a little bit off or if you're using the qualifier you might have some artifacts and not the true representation of what your delivered project will look like so you might want to disable it while you're working with color and also if you're using something like a color checker then you also want to disable optimized media because the colors might look a little bit different there and then if you try to match your color the result might not be very accurate. But other than that, there are not many drawbacks when it comes to working with optimized media. Now, one thing I wish DaVinci Resolve was doing a little bit better is the type of file it's using for optimized media. If we take a look at our cache clip folder right here, let's just click on the first one here, click on info. Okay, as you can see, this is the project we're currently working on, Showreel 2020. We have a optimized media folder inside of here, which has a file size of 3.6 gigabytes right now. And if you click inside of it, you'll find many, many small folders with DVCC files. And these are not normal video files that you can play back somewhere else. And so if you want to work with these files in something like Premiere Pro or Final Cut Pro 10, you will not be able to do that, which is kind of bad if you ask me. Because Adobe's Media Encoder creates a regular video file that you can play back in DaVinci Resolve or any other NLE of your choice. So this is pretty unfortunate. And also if you move your folder from one place to another, sometimes if you try to reconnect your optimized media using rediscover optimized media it might not actually work out and it will not find the files even though they're in the exact same folder like before so these are things that I hope DaVinci Resolve will do better in the future and as far as I can tell DaVinci Resolve has evolved over the past few years and has become such a great piece of software because it includes so many features in just one platform which in my opinion offers a way better solution than something like Premiere Pro After Effects or Audition because you don't have to open up that specific software and you can do everything from one place. So I hope this will get addressed in the future, but for now we have to deal with that. And yeah, that's pretty much it on this tutorial. 
If you've enjoyed this tutorial and you've learned something new, then please make sure to leave a thumbs up or a comment if you have any further questions. Once again, thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one.